Thank you, Donald. And the date has been set. July the 13th, Donald Trump is coming to the United Kingdom. And I'll talk more about that later on in the show. But the one political figure that has really been dominating the headlines now for day after day is, of course, Amber Rudd, the Home Secretary, the very pro-EU Amber Rudd, Home Secretary, in trouble over Windrush. People not having passports. Some were facing the threat of deportation. And now, of course, it all boils over as it's revealed that within the Home Office there were targets for removing illegal immigrants. And this has been whipped up into a huge storm. Diane Abbott actually saying she should resign, reminding the House of Commons that Lord Carrington resigned over the Falklands, saying it was a matter of honour. I wonder, Diane Abbott, how many people resigned over the Iraq war and the false dossier? Hmm, never mind. But if that wasn't bad enough, today, Amber Rudd, was at a press gallery luncheon. Now, this is something that happens on a regular basis. A politician goes, there's 50 or 60 journalists in the room. They are the lobby journalists representing the radio stations, the TV stations, the newspapers. I've spoken at a couple of them. It's not, for any political figure, an easy thing to do. But, my goodness me, didn't she drop her guard today? In answer to a question, she refused to rule out Britain staying in a customs union, saying the issue was still a matter for cabinet discussion. Imagine the anger that led to. Peter Bone shot back at the press gallery lunch today. I could not understand why Amber Rudd did not support government policy to leave the customs union. We cannot have a Home Secretary supporting this key plank of Brexit. So she's under fire, not just from the Labour side and the Lib Dem side. She's now coming under fire after what she said at lunch today from some on her own back benches. She's re- she has really faced, you know, repeated calls to go. And I'm asking you tonight, do you think the time has come for Amber Rudd to go? And if you think, no, 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 we cannot afford to destabilise a Brexit government with 11 months to go, then call me on 0345 973 Or perhaps you think, yes, the whole thing is an Amber Ruddy mess and she really has got to go, in which case you can text to 84850. Or maybe you think none of it's her fault, give her a break, it's a tough old job, in which case tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC, watch us on Facebook and comment there too. Now on the back of this, there's also been a vote that has taken place in the House of Commons today, and it's all a little bit confusing. So, to help us through it, I've got Theo Usherwood, LBC's political editor, on the line. Good evening, Theo. Very good evening, Nigel. Yes, should we start with uh, that vote or non-vote? Uh, it was a back bench uh, business uh, motion. It was a non-binding vote, yep. uh, and it was calling on the government to keep Britain within uh, the customs union. Now, what the government did is, in order to avoid uh, an embarrassing showdown, in order to avoid uh, creating the whips uh, a real headache by ensuring that people like Anna Subri and Dominic Grieve uh, behaved themselves in uh, in view of the government and stuck with the party policy and the government policy uh, to keep Britain, uh, to take Britain out of uh, the customs union, they sent round an email saying that everybody uh, had to find some campaigning to do ahead of the local elections and that anybody with any ambition uh, would avoid spending any time on the parliamentary estate uh, this afternoon. So in effect, <laughs> what they tried to do is turn it into a complete non-event by simply saying, we're not going to participate in this, we're not, gonna, we're not even going to entertain the idea of voting. And so what inevitably happened was when it came to a vote, the motion was simply nodded through and journalists and pundits and commentators can't suddenly turn around to uh, the government and say, well, look, there you go, you're, you're running, uh, running scared on a vote of the customs union. Because, of course, the big amendment that's coming up when the, vi- when the government finally comes back with its trade and customs bill, the, the 10 Tory MPs have signed an amendment which would, in effect, keep Britain within the customs union. And, of course, the government's trying to find a compromise with those MPs, uh, but they're not prepared to bring that piece and of legislation yet, Theo, back to the House of Commons without people, having sorted it. These people were elected on very clear manifestos last June to leave the customs union. Yeah, but their, 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 you know, their line would be, and the line we've heard repeatedly from people like Dominic Grieve is, you know, they, in their view, they are what is in the national interest, and of course, this ties into what happened with Amber Rudd uh, at that lobby lunch. Um, yeah, you know, in effect, saying, well, 
you know, the matter of the customs union is up for discussion. Number 10 has been completely uh, clear on it. Britain is leaving the customs union because uh, they want the, the government wants to sign its own trade deals. And if we're part of the customs union, we can't, can't sign our that. own trade yep. deals outside the European Union. So uh, Amber Rudd was then forced to make an embarrassing tweet, which would in effect said that she got it completely wrong uh, at the lunch. But it gives you some indication of the tension within the cabinet. Amber Rudd, of course, on one side, opposite people like Boris Johnson and Fox David Davis, who uh, think it has to be the policy to take Britain out of the customs union. I mean, I have to say, you know, to, to put out this clarification tweet, as you say, yeah. thanks to the press gallery for hosting me at a challenging yet enjoyable lunch, I should have been clearer. Oh, they all say that. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. when we leave the EU. <laughs> I mean, this is really pretty humiliating. And I have to say, Theo, I thought 48 hours ago... She was safe. ...that she would survive and she was safe. I'm not so sure she survives now, are you? Well, I mean, the first question came uh, at the morning briefing um, that, you know, it's the one that every minister dreads hearing on the readout, which is, you know, when, when the transcript goes back to departments, is, you know, does the Prime Minister have full confidence in the Home Secretary? Yes, came the answer. But the oh, fact the question that's is always being, a bad but the side. Fact, <laughs> but the fact the question is being asked is a really bad yeah, side. No, that, absolutely. That quite right to say. And, and it goes, and that was that was even before the customs union debacle. Yes. This was on the fact that yesterday, when she appeared in front of the Home Affairs Select Committee, she said that she wasn't aware of any targets when it came to uh, voluntary deportations. Um, then we had, uh, then of course that was a compare and contrast against a lady called Lucy Morriton, who's uh, the director general of the union, which represents immigration and border staff, who said actually that there were targets when it came to voluntary deportation for enforcement teams in different regions of the country. Uh, and then we had uh, the, the unearthing of a report dating back to 2015, which also proved there were targets. Amber Rudd goes back to the House of Commons for an urgent question. Diane Abbott actually did pretty well in the House of Commons and, and is forced to admit that she got it all wrong. Uh, humiliation all round. Amber Rudd, yes, vulnerable this evening. Yeah, absolutely. Theo, thanks very much indeed. So that vote that took place tonight, will ignore that completely. But Rudd, in trouble, in trouble, perhaps in some ways, for something that is not her fault. After all, it was 2009 when the landing cards held at the Home Office for the Windrush migrants got shredded. So this may not be her fault. She's not been very clear over whether there were migrant removal targets, probably because she'd be embarrassed to tell the world they existed. Although, you know, a Sky Data poll out today suggests that quite a big majority of people think that having targets for removing illegal immigrants is a perfectly reasonable thing for a government to have. But under fire on all sides and then this enormous slip up. How can you have in a Brexit government one of the senior officers in front of the entire press lobby questioning whether we're going to leave the customs union? I have to say I, I have changed my mind in the last 48 hours. I don't believe her position is tenable. Helen on Twitter says to me, all Remainers in the Cabinet should go. They are holding Brexit negotiations back. Also May is equally at fault for the immigration route. She certainly is. May and Rudd should both go and I'm a Tory voter. So you see what I mean? This isn't just Diane Abbott and Labour now on the attack. Actually, we saw from Peter Bone, we get there from Helen, there are many Tories who think something's got to happen. I have said before on this programme, either have a cabinet of all Remainers or a cabinet of all Leavers. Let us know exactly where we are. Let's go to Graham on Hey On Why. Good evening, Graham. Hello, Nigel. Good to speak to you again. So, has Amber Rudd made an absolute mess of this? Yes has and I think I think she should go too and they should get a, another cabinet minister in who's pro Brexit to balance things up a bit. This should have been a non story. It was an administrative blunder. There was no malice yes. intended. Yes. It was a mess up and it should have been dealt with quickly and efficiently, but she has allowed it to become a real issue, a real problem, and she's losing the confidence of just about everybody, especially with her slip up again today. She's shown her true colours and she needs to go. Would her removal and replacement by a pro-Brexit Home Secretary, would that bring stability or instability to a government that's looking a bit lacklustre? I'd like to think it would bring a bit more stability. Um, obviously, the last thing we want is instability at the moment, but uh, we've got to uh, get, some, get some... You've got a very noisy Labrador there, Graham. Oh, sorry, I've got a couple of dogs and the visitors just <laughs> I just see myself into the room. Sorry, <laughs> No, it, it, we need. It, she, she has made a mess of things. She has not got the confidence of anybody, I don't think, at the moment. Theresa May is hanging on to her because she's kind of using her as a shield. And uh, but I think she needs to go. Who do you fancy as Home Secretary, Graham? 
Sorry? Who do you fancy as Home Secretary? Jacob Rees-Mogg. Jacob Rees-Mogg. Very, very good indeed. Graham, thank you for your call. Let's get to Anthony and Staines. Good evening, Anthony. So, has she, oh, made, a, has she made a ruddy mess of it, Anthony? Well, she has. She's handled us very poorly, but I've never rated Amber Rudd. You know, I think she was put in there by Cameron. And I think that Theresa May, if not now, should get rid of her ASAP. Because, you know, <laughs> she's reaching a tipping point, as it were, and it's time for her removal... Trouble is, Anthony, um, Theresa May doesn't get rid of anybody, does she? Well, she got rid of, uh, what was his name, the one had the touch of the knee. Yeah. Uh, somebody, and she got rid of Pretty Patel. Yeah. She got in a pickle. Um, but I think the person to go into the home office is Boris. Boris? Yes. Why? Well, because he's pro-Brexit, or allegedly so. Do you, and, on, uh, Anthony, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you honestly think that the Conservative Party in the House of Commons and membership in the country would want Boris as Home Secretary in charge of immigration policy, given that he's now advocating for the third time publicly amnesties for illegal immigrants? Well, I think it would certainly be entertaining with Boris in the Home Office. <laughs> well, I'm sure it would be that. <laughs> and plus the fact that he does have a lot of capital in London. You see, the Tories are in grave danger of making some big losses, and even well, big are. losses now, uh, on May the 3rd. Well, we'll have, to see, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see about what happens on May the 3rd and discuss that afterwards. We can't interfere in that process. But look, yes. uh, Anthony, you've lost confidence in Amber Rudd, yeah? Certainly. Certainly. Thank you very much indeed. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show exclusively on LBC. Amber Rudd has enraged many on her own side now, because there, at a press gallery lunch, when she was asked about leaving the customs union, she said, it's still a matter for cabinet discussion. She was forced later to put out a retraction on Twitter, but people from Peter Bone onwards are getting very, very unhappy about her being in that position. Evening, Nigel, I'm furious, I get by text. Amber Rudd must go, because she, like others doesn't want to go along with our biggest democratic vote in history. Enough is enough, says John from Wales. Rudd the dud must go. She is just a clone of Theresa the appeaser. Some really angry people here, and they're actually Tory supporters that are giving me all this. But please, if you think I'm wrong, and so far the public are wrong, call me at 0345 973 and tell me why she needs to stay. Other news, the US Senate tonight has voted by 57 to 42 to confirm CIA Director Mike Pompeo as Donald Trump's second US Secretary of State. Pompeo, the man, of course, who was shaken the hand of Kim Jong-un, the man who has brokered the meeting that will happen, we think, before the end of May, between the president of the USA and the leader of North Korea. So Pompeo in place. And something else here to ponder. The Football Association has announced it's received an offer to buy Wembley Stadium, apparently. Shade Khan, who already owns uh, Fulham Football Club and the Jacksonville Jaguars NFL team, has put in a bid of £500 million to buy the National Stadium. Now, some of you may know, NFL, soccer's getting popular in the USA, but American football is getting very popular in this country. And whenever they have NFL teams over, they fill out Wembley Stadium. But just a thought... You know, someone said to me before the show, well, we've sold off our water, we've sold off our gas, foreign companies are buying everything, shouldn't our national soccer stadium, football stadium, shouldn't that remain in British hands? I won't give you a view, but it's something you can talk about. It's an issue we will return to. So back to Rudd. Is it time she went? Graham says to me, no, Nigel, she shouldn't resign. She should stay to sort this mess out. Well, when it comes to, when it comes to Windrush, Graham, when it comes to how the Home Office were dealing with targets for removing illegals, I might just agree with you. Because I might say she inherited this mess from both Theresa May and, indeed, given that it was 2009 when the records got shredded, the Labour government too. But, Graham, how can you be, how can you hold one of the great offices of state in what is said to be a Brexit government and doubt in front of the entire press lobby whether we're leaving the customs union? I, I think she has to go, but there we are. Nick is calling from Oxford. Good evening, Nick. Hello, Nigel. Uh, no, I don't think she should resign. I think she's just being held up as a scapegoat. And I think the reason why she's enraged a lot of her colleagues is because they absolutely, they actually agree with her. 
that are too cowardly to say so. What? And as for all these going-ons in Parliament today, I thought parliamentary democracy was about debating things and voting voting on things. And what did Theo Usherwood said? It was all done on a nod of the head. Yeah. So I, that the government would appear defeated. Uh, well, what kind of charade is that? Well, charade, I, I tell you what, Nick, charade is the right word for what happened there in the House of Commons today, and I would agree with that. Um, but you're not suggesting to me, are you, that there are lots of her parliamentary colleagues who actually think, like she does, that maybe yeah, we should that, that maybe we shouldn't leave the customs union. Well, she's not the only one in her party, is she? There's a lot of rebels already, and I'm sure they're going to come out of the closet soon about the customs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we know some of them, obviously, the Anna Subris, the Ken Clarks, and we know some, Dominic Greaves, and we know those people. But oh, I think you'll find there'll be a lot more careerist ones who want to come out of the closet soon, the ones that you don't get so much of a mention. Um, but, Nick, if you're Theresa May, right? Nick, you're in charge, you're the governor, you, despite the fact you voted Remain, have, have inherited this position, you're leading a Brexit government, you're there, having been re-elected, albeit in a coalition with the DUP, but you can't surely, as a Brexit government, have one of your senior office holders questioning publicly a key piece of policy. Well, you see, the thing about all these negotiations, we haven't got anywhere, have we? We haven't really got through the first stage over the, the Ireland bit. It's all been cobbled up as if we have. Now we haven't, we haven't even started the trade negotiations. So you call it a Brexit government. Let's make some progress. We're not making any progress. Look at Macron. Look at, well, a lot of people. They, they all think that Brexit is lunacy from the British point of view. Well, and, of course uh, they do, Nick, because they're, they're, because because they're speaking. Because they're speaking for their big business backers, aren't they? Well, whether it is or not, but Brexit is impractical from a lot of circumstances, not just from business, from everything political and social and everything else. How, tell, tell me, Nick, I mean, slightly off topic, but how is it impractical to want to be a self-governing democracy rather than taking rules from Brussels? Because you go on about nationalism and everything, and we all talk that it should be nationalism. Nationalism doesn't work. Right, if so it did, if it did, we'll all be happy little countries all on our own with our own little borders, our own little queens and kings and everything else, and everything everybody would be friendly, but it doesn't work because it's all about trade. It's all about economics. Ah, uh, that's the yeah. argument we've had for 50 years, isn't it? We have to join the common market. It's right. all about trade. In fact, Nick, if we don't join the euro, we were told in 2000, it would all be a disaster. And, you know, just sometimes, I think, a lot of us have got bored being given economic predictions, few of which ever come right. The point is, Nick, she cannot, Theresa May cannot live with a Home Secretary questioning this policy. Well, if she had any principle, Theresa May, she wouldn't have been. She wouldn't be the prime minister now. She never <laughs> believed in Brexit. No, I know, I know, Nick. Yeah. On that point, you and I are in agreement. I'm going to leave it there. Sally says on Facebook, "How can she be so off message? She's surely at May's right hand side most of the time. Well, perhaps she's trying to undermine her." Sally. Mark says, "If May can deliver cruise missiles to Syria, she can well deliver Brexit. We'll see." And Leonard says, "Even if you were to replace Amber Rudd, you would only get another Amber Rudd." Oh, Leonard, you think they're all career politicians, don't you? You're not alone. Helen says, Boris for Britain. Anna says, Rudd has to be a safe pair of hands. She has been so far. Give her a chance to sort it out. Anna, I've said this earlier, she can sort out the immigration mess. That's fine. But how can she sort out the fact she fundamentally disagrees with government policy on Brexit? Difficult. George is a first-time caller from Basingstoke. Good evening. Hello, Nigel. Um, I'm a big fan um, of you. Um, i just like to agree with you because Amber Rudd has done an awful job of being Home Secretary. Yes, immigration has gone down, um, that, but that is because of Brexit and the fact that immigrants aren't getting welcome here anymore. Um, what I want to know... Well, is, I, I, I don't know about that, George. We still welcome immigrants. The point about Brexit is not to... The point about Brexit is not to pull up the drawbridge, but, but to control who comes over it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pro Brexit and all that, but the, the same can't be said for Amber Rudd. I don't no. think that she truly, she truly is pro Brexit. And at a time like this, especially in a turbulent time with also terrorism as well in this country. I mean, last year alone we had three major terrorist attacks, and not to mention the hundreds of preventable ones and also the small ones. Um, and that's, that, that is partly, um, in my point of view, to do with Sadiq Khan and his control of London, but it also has got to do with Amber Rudd. Like, why? Is this country still um, allowing to have 23,000 23, and 23,000 uh, registered and known jihadists to stay here? 
Why aren't they getting deported and why aren't they being dealt with? Well, the trouble, George, is a lot of them have British passports. And so that is a real problem and a real issue. Where I would really agree with you is I just cannot believe that we've allowed 400 people who fought for ISIS in Syria back into this country free to walk our streets. So we've been incredibly weak on this stuff. George, do you think if Amber Rudd went and if and if a stronger pro-Brexit Home Secretary was appointed, that might bring this government a bit more stability? Of course, Nigel, I absolutely agree with you. Um, someone strong like um, Rhys Mogg, as was mentioned before, yep. um, yeah, that, that, would, that would be perfect. That's exactly what this country needs. We need someone who has actually got values, uh, not just family values, but also British values, and who respects our country and knows how to deal with it. Um, but where I'm disappointed um, with you, Nigel, is that just the fact that you, that, you, that you haven't done much for us in recent years. I mean, Years ago, when I was fourteen, yep. I, I was I, I always admired you and your politics. But now I, I I don't see you doing much for Britain, and more more you're supporting Trump. Um, you, keep, you keep stepping down from UKIP, but why not take, try and take a centre stage? Why not try and negotiate with you? You've got the influence. Why not try and negotiate with Theresa May and other Conservatives? And then just because they. They would listen to you, and they... they, they George, would, they I have would. to tell you, I have to tell you, you know, however well thought through your ideas are, you have to understand the establishment absolutely loathe me. They loathe me because they see me as being responsible for causing a referendum that none of them wanted, and now they've got to push through Brexit, which few of them want. They're not in a mood to talk to me. But, George, I tell you what, if they want to, they've all got my mobile phone number, and I thank you very much indeed for calling. Let's go to Steve from Southampton, another first-time caller. Good evening, Steve. Steve. Oh, evening, Nigel. Um, I want to, you know, I'm a bit confused about this because there seem to be two reasons for Amber Rudd to resign, um, and they seem to be a bit, bit conflated. Um, yeah, you're right, she, Steve. You're right, Steve. This, you know, on the one hand, she's being asked to resign for having the audacity to to try and uphold the law and have targets or whatever it is regarding yep. illegal i mean imagine having the audacity to try and uphold the law in this country and, and being called to resign on i've got i've hand, got no criticisms of that at all i wish she'd been a bit more forthright in saying yes absolutely but because they're so pc steve she ran away with it and looked like she wasn't quite telling the truth but actually steve you know i mentioned the sky data poll earlier big majority think actually it's right for governments to remove illegal immigrants so i'm with you i don't think that's a reason for her to resign yeah, i mean it's, it's a very strange world isn't it when when you're 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 called to resign for actually trying to to uphold the law and, and so no, and I agree with that, but it would have been better if she'd been robust in her defence rather than uh, slightly shying away. But well, it doesn't make them look good, does it? I mean, it, it, it doesn't you know. look. It, she doesn't. She didn't look like somebody who was in charge. And then, Stephen, you know, you're right about conflation. Then, on top of that, we get and this wasn't, you know, a cup of tea in the local constituency, Women's Institute meeting, or whatever it may be, you know, where, where you might think it was a private conversation. This was at a press gallery lunch. And she's asked about the customs union, and I'll repeat, for those that didn't catch this earlier, you know, she refuses to rule out us staying in the customs union, saying the issue was still a matter for cabinet discussion. And I think, Steve, by doing this, she hasn't just upset the opposition, she's now upset her own side, and I think her position looks weak. I mean, every day, you know, it, Brexit is just like an everyday exercise in trying to push water uphill. I mean, that's what it's like. Well, do you know what? If you believe in what you're doing, it gets easier. She doesn't. Thank you. Well, the Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, refuses to rule out Britain staying in a customs union, saying the issue was still a matter for cabinet discussion, despite being elected, part of the team that was elected on that manifesto, and then I think somewhat humiliatingly, later on in the day, has to put out a tweet saying, thanks to the press gallery for hosting me at a challenging yet enjoyable lunch. I should have been clearer. Of course, when we leave the EU, we'll be leaving the customs 
union. Well, yeah. Mm. But I think the truth came out that Amber Rudd was one of the key players in the Remain side, and frankly, she hasn't accepted the result. And Mrs May's put together this cabinet, you know, of Leavers and Remainers together, thinking it can be business as usual, and actually, with something as fundamental as Brexit, it cannot be. So the Donald is coming to the UK. He is coming on Friday, the 13th of July, following on from a NATO summit in Brussels on the 11th and 12th. I'm pleased this is happening. We're only a year behind the French in doing this, but we're more than a year behind the French because because when he went there, it was a full state visit. This is to be just a working visit. It is unclear whether he will come to central London or not. I think he's concerned about protests, which many seem to want to have. He may go to Windsor and meet the Queen there. He may go to Balmoral and meet the Queen there. I would be surprised if he didn't come and visit, you know, some of his... Um, golf courses, uh, but in terms of, pub of public engagements, it's really tough to tell. Sadiq Khan has said, if he comes to London, President Trump will experience an open and diverse city that has always chosen unity over division and hope over fear. He will also no doubt see that Londoners hold liberal values of freedom of speech very dear. Oh, well done, Sadiq. You couldn't have put out a more PC statement, could you? Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure where Trump will go, but the fact that he's coming is good. And top of the agenda needs to be talks about trade. We've got to crack on with this. And the more it looks like we've got a feasible trade deal on the blocks with America, the stronger our negotiating hand is in Brussels. Support coming through for Amber Rudd. Amber Rudd should stay. I think she would make a good PM. I hope to see you in Normandy again this year, says James from Slough. Um, I'm not sure I'm going this year, James, but I will be going next year for the 75th anniversary of D-Day. I'll see you on that day without any shadow of a doubt. Amber Rudd should not be where she is. She's a Remainer, and we need a Brexiteer in position. The PM May doesn't even seem to believe in Brexit, so what chance is there? None, says Phil. There are a lot of people out there that voted Brexit who are really, really pretty angry about all this, but others think she's great. Rudd must stay. Decades of incoherent immigration policy and ineffective equivocation. She will sort it out. Well, maybe she will sort out the Home Office, but what about Brexit? What's she going to do about that? Mm. James is calling from Clapham. Good evening, James. Uh, good evening, Nigel. Well, Amber Red can sort that out in her memoirs because she can stand out. <laughs> <laughs> she's concerned about Nigel is the majority of 346 which she's got. And can I just be clear, Nigel, that all these MPs in the Houses of Parliament, you listen right now. You had your chance, you voted for the referendum, you voted for the question that was to be put on the referendum, and the Prime Minister said that he will implement the will of the people. Yep. End of story. You do what we tell you to do. It's not the Cabinet, it's what we told you to do. 17.4 million people, we voted to leave, and leave everything, and this word, you stand out. You sound pretty angry, James. I am furious, Nigel. At the end of the day, two years ago we voted for this. Yep. We didn't expect the result, Nigel. People like Anna Subri and Ken Clark voted for the question that was put on that paper. They voted for the referendum. They didn't like the result. Now they're basically trying to twist it and turn it. It's not going to happen. We voted to leave, but we are leaving. Come, come the 31st of March, I'll have the flag outside, the Union Jack line, at full mast. Well, let me know what street it is, James, and I'll pop by for a cup of tea. All right, let's hope we get over the line, and the actual moment will be 11pm on the 29th of March next year. That is when we're due to leave the Treaty of Rome. And do you know what, James? Even if we leave on very poor terms and we're wrapped up in all sorts of agreements, once we're a sovereign country, we can sort it all out. But I just wonder, James, do people like Amber Rudd want to stop even that from happening? Yes, they do, Nigel. At the end of the day, they will try everything possible to twist it. We've got these people now doing the open votes, Chaka Amunia and Anna Subri. Yep. Now, the people should have the, the people should now have, have another chance, and they're saying it's not a second referendum. Excuse me, Anna Subri, you had your chance to stand up in 2015 when you voted for the referendum and for the question that got put on it. You know? Is, isn't it funny, James? Yeah. But the very people who was strongest over the last few years in saying we shouldn't have a referendum at all 
are the ones who now want another one because they didn't like the result. James, I thank you. Keep your temper. We'll get there in the end. Hi, Nigel. I want the Mog brought into the Cabinet to bring stability. Mrs May promoted a former Chief Whip to Defence, so this isn't an issue, says John from Wales. Well, we'll see. Neil from Surrey says Mr Gove should be Rudd's successor as he's a good mechanic. He gets things done. He was able to shake up education and he's cleaned up the environment. Well... I suppose, Neil, that if Rudd was going to be replaced, Gove would be quite near the top of that list. At least I hope he would. Vic is a first-time caller from Shepherd's Bush. Good evening, Vic. Uh, good evening, Nigel. Thank you for taking my call. Not one bit. So what do you make of Mrs Rudd's difficulties? Well, I think it's very sad, Nigel. And she has an unbel- unbelievably hard job to do. All the- Everyone before her has failed. The Labour Party failed, Alan Johnson failed, Clark failed under the Labour It's a really, really difficult job, and I think she's doing her very best. I know that her brief, she hasn't been briefed very well on what has happened in different parts of the Home Office, but Nigel, she's doing a hard job, and she's a strong woman. She should survive. I pray she survives, Nigel. Well, it is a very hard job. By the way, Vic, just quickly, how do you assess the record of the longest-serving Home Secretary for 150 years, Theresa May? I know she was. She she has. She's she, she's she's trying to do her best. <coughs> it's a really difficult job dealing with immigration. <coughs> yeah. With all with with crime with every. It's that should be it should be split, Nigel, into three different departments: crime, immigration, and something else, Nigel. It really should be split. Right, now I, Vic, I, I I totally accept your point that it is probably the toughest job in British politics it in is, many ways. It is. Yeah. And I accept that. However, however. What do you make of her comments today at the press gallery lunch? Here she is, you know, one of the top people yeah. in a Brexit cabinet, in a Brexit government, elected to deliver the will of the people. And she says, when she's asked about the customs union, she refuses to rule out us staying in it, saying it's up for further discussion. How yeah. does that, Vic, make her? What, yeah, whatever, I mean, whatever her abilities may be. It makes her a Remainer, Nigel. It makes her a Remainer. But, ha- yeah. but, but how can we have a Remainer holding a top job in a Brexit government? No, I, I suppose I, I, um, I agree with you there, Nigel. I, I really think if she does go, it should be given to Michael Gold. Yeah, well, I, Vic, I, I, I have to say, if I had to look around as to who should do it to get a Brexiteer in, uh, he'd probably be quite near the top of my list. Vic, I thank you very much indeed for your call, and Vic pointing out there that, you know, it's a pretty tough, blooming job. Tina says, the Donald's coming over. Yay, let's get this party started. Dorothy says, I hope the Donald comes to Scotland. Dorothy, he will go to Scotland. I'm absolutely certain of that. He was very close to his mother. His mother, of course, came from the Isle of Lewis and lived to a great age and never, ever changed her Scottish accent. She came back for a month every year to the Isle of Lewis. And Trump, Trump feels that Scottishness in him. He loves the country. He loves the countryside. He's got a couple of golf courses up there. I've n- no doubt that Trump will go to Scotland. The question is, will he come to London? And he says, targets for deporting illegal immigrants sounds spot on to me. What's the problem? Andy, there is no problem. Why didn't the Home Secretary when she was confronted with this, say, that is our job. Our job is to enforce the law. But she didn't. She did She did the PC thing and tried to run away with it. Rudd and May need to be replaced by Patel and Mogg, says Shaz. And Peter says, if Theresa gets rid of Rudd, she will be replaced by another Remainer. Peter, I'm not sure the Conservative Party's in the mood for that, but we will see. Rob is calling from Bolney in West Sussex, a first-time caller to the show. Good evening. Hi, Sir Nigel. Welcome to the programme. Is it time? I mean, you know, has she made a ruddy mess of it, Rob? Yes, definitely. With the, with Windrush and the Brexit, she, they need to have more leaders in the government. Definitely. Do you really think Windrush is her fault? Um, no, but the way I think she should um, resign over it. I don't think she's. Uh, she's nobody's taken responsibility about how it's been. She's head. No, in the modern world in politics, Rob, very, very few people do take responsibility, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and, and clearly, she's inherited a mess here on that. Um, and that's difficult for anybody in a senior position. But there is a point when, when, when resignation is right. What about her views on Brexit? 
I don't agree with them. I've I've been off work for about six months, and all I'm a passionate lever, um, yep. and I've, I can't stand watching the news anymore. BBC can't watch it anymore. Um, yeah, just disgusted. I, I'm I'm close to marching up there and starting to walk outside the House of Parliament, like the European Remainer. You know right. the one that's there every day. So you're getting pretty militant, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a bit. Um, yeah, I'm getting a bit tired of it. Right. Well, if Rob has yeah. his way, Rudd will be out by breakfast. Thank you, Rob. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show. Support for the Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, is slipping. And the Sky Data poll out today says that 41% of people think she should resign and 41% of people think she should stay. The fact that 41% now think she should resign is a significant figure. I think authority and credibility is beginning to slip away from her. And it's not just coming from vicious labour attacks, which actually she should be fending off uh, with a little bit more strength than she has to date. It's now beginning to come from her, from her own side because I think many feel the mask slipped today at that press gallery lunch where she made it clear that basically she doesn't want us to leave the customs union or even the European Union. Nigel, Mr Gove should be the successor. Lots of Gove support coming through here. Nigel, the top replacement, is staring us all in the face. The fantastic Esther McVeigh. She wouldn't. Put, she would put a rocket at the useless civil servants in the Home Office, says John from Burnham on Sea. Well, I, I, Esther McVeigh, I have to say, I think she's terrific. But whether she's really actually going to get promotion to that level at this moment in time, I am not sure. Michael is a first-time caller from Farnham. Good evening, Michael. Hello, Nigel. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Does she stay or does she go, Michael? Well, do you know what? I, there's a, there's a, you've been in business, and I, I run a company. We employ about 50 people. Yeah. If you're going to take people with you, and look, this is specifically around the sort of Brexit thing, yeah. and I've got to include Theresa May in this, if you're going to, 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 to bring people along with you, they've got to, they've got to see and feel and believe that, that what you're going for, the goal in life, the goal in business, for instance, you actually walk the talk, you actually get out there and do it and demonstrate it can be done, you know? And, and I've got to say that Theresa May and Amber Rudd and, and you know, they, it's, it's, it's almost like through gritted teeth, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a real shame, you know? I mean, I have to say, I'm, I, was a, I was a lever, but a reluctant one. I was a bit like Digby Jones, you know? Yep. I was hoping there would be some reform within the EU, but that was a forlorn hope, I think, at the end of the day. So, but, but, the sort of abject negativity from them and the lack of faith in the country and what the country can do um, going forward when, when we can get free from the EU is unbelievable. I, I beg his belief. The they don't the believe in Britain, Michael, do they? Sorry? They don't believe in Britain. No, that's the thing. And, and, that I, and it's, I think it's shameful, you know, and uh, it, it, it really is quite surprising. But the other thing I was going to say, I want to make the point as well, I don't, you know, with, with the Windrush thing, I don't believe Amber Rudd is is responsible for that. That's that's a systemic thing. There's there's all the Labour Party's involved, not necessarily in Windrush, but in the process that maybe led to it, and certainly Theresa May is. But again, I think that is it's also a sign that it's you know where immigration is concerned. Pick on, you know, they've they've targeted like Commonwealth citizens. And, 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 non, you know, and all that sort of end of things, if you like, which it's almost like it's a, it's a, it's a European ethos, isn't it? You know, it's just like they, we don't want to be part of that. That, that. The whole government and the Home Office and the civil servants all around that, let's get as far away from that as we possibly can. But everything that comes in from Europe is deemed as good, and it's yeah, not. Yeah. You know? Every, so, everything with Europe is great. Everything with the, West, the rest of the world is highly questionable. And that's the mindset we've been stuck in. Uh, with our immigration policy, with our trade policy. And that's the point of Brexit, Michael, isn't it? To completely change the it, thinking of the country. It uh, absolutely is. And, and to deliver that, we need leadership. That's the point you're making about a business, isn't it? You've got to take people with you. I just don't think Amber Rudd is able to do that. You yeah, know, I, I, I agree. And I, and I think, again, you could look about, you know, when she talked about the, um, the police numbers, you know. I mean, it's, it stretches credulity to suggest that, um, you know, reductions, large reductions in the police force don't affect um, I know. I know. the crime. It's nonsense. I know. It's unbelievable, you know, isn't it? And we're supposed yeah. to swallow that. So, Michael, you think Rudd should go. What do you think? I mean, how do you feel about Mrs May? Is it vital she stays there to get us over the Brexit line or should they make that change too? 
No, I think, uh, actually, the more I think about it, um, and, and I'm a, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be quite frank, I'm a party member, all right? Yeah. And, and I, th- I think they both have to go. You think they both have to go? Right. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah. Given, given that we've only got 11 months to go till, till Brexit, Michael, if this fundamental change is going to happen, it's going to have to happen pretty soon, isn't it? It is. It absolutely is, you know. And, and, and I really do think that if we're going to shake up the Barniers and this of this world, and, and you know, we really do need that change, because I, I, otherwise I can't see it. You know, mm, I can't see mm, it. Mm, mm, mm. No. Michael, great call. Thank you for calling in. And, you know, Michael makes the point, whether you're running a company of 50 people as he is, or leading a nation of 65 million people, leadership is pretty important, and there isn't too much of that. Charles is a first-time caller from Watford. Good evening, Charles. Hello, Nigel. It's great to speak to you at last. Great to have you on the show, Charles. Thank you. I I know it can take some time to get through, but you've got there. Well worth the wait. You've got there. So tell me, does Rudd stay or go? Well, I tell you, on balance, I think she should stay, Mm -hmm. because I don't want the government weakened any further. And in, I would have said she should go if she hadn't recanted. Um, uh, what you mean, her tweet that she sent her out? Tweet, yeah. yes. Um, oh yes, oh yeah. I, I oh, I could have been, I could have been clearer, but they always say that, Charles, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I I understand the point you're making, and and if she hadn't recanted, I would have said she should go. Okay. Can I just say, um, I voted to leave the EEC in 1975. Yep. And I did that because anything that could bring such disparate intellects as Enoch Powell and Tony Benn together was good enough for me. Right. And I want to say one more thing. Anna Soubry was interviewed by Nick Ferrari uh, the other day, Uh and she said, we won't get a good deal because if we did, everyone else would want to leave. Mm. Oh, really, Anna? I thought the EU was a wonderful thing that we should remain in. Well, of course, Macron, Charles. Macron said it's a good thing we didn't have a referendum in France, otherwise we'd have voted to leave as well. So it's it's as if, isn't it, that Brussels wants to keep everybody a prisoner. Oh, that's right. And Anna Soubry, who's a big enthusiast for the EU, acknowledges it may have been a Freudian slip. Go figure. Yes, yes. Subri acknowledges that if we got a good deal, everyone else yep. would want to leave. Well, to which I must only ask her, why would they want to leave if it's such a wonderful thing? Yeah, because it's not a wonderful thing, it's a horrible thing. It's a terrible a- thing. And it's becoming more authoritarian by the day. And Charles, you're one of the clever people, because you got it right in both referendums. And well done you, and thank you very much indeed for the call. Let's go to Harry in Nottingham. Harry, good evening. Good evening, Dr. Um, I think I think that Amber Rudd should go, but I don't think this is the incident that that would make it go. I think it's the tip of the iceberg, and I think she's been in far too many slip-ups, and I think this has come to the conclusion. Right. So you think she's been you think she's been a bad Home Secretary? Full stop. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's. I think she's far too cautious. I think um, she's not really making much decisions. I think the fact she's got a seat that is very marginal. Really yeah, and I tell you what, I tell you what, Harry, that seat, there's one issue in that seat that's going to give her a really hard time, and that is fishing. Hastings has the biggest beach launching fleet in the United Kingdom, and of course they were Brexit to a man and woman, you know, on that beach of Old Town Hastings, and the fact that the government, uh, you know, is not taking back our fishing rights for at least the transition period, I think puts her in deep water in that seat. Yeah. But my general point about the the statement she made about the customs union is is that and and anyone who thinks that Brexit wasn't about customs union or leaving the single market or getting back control of fishing or getting back control of the European Court of Justice or controlling immigration and having our own trade deals, when as to what Brexit actually is. Well, Brexit, Harry, I, I, you know, your line's awful, by the way, but Brexit, it couldn't be much clearer, really, what Brexit actually was all about. David on Facebook is unimpressed by the callers tonight. He says, utter rubbish statements by some of those calling in. Like all new bosses, Amber Rudd should act like a boss and get her department organised as she is the boss and get stuck in and get to grips with it. David, of course she should do that. But when it comes out 
that within the Home Office they've got a system of targets for dealing with illegal immigrants. Why, when you're confronted with that, do you say, oh, well, no, not really, or why not just say, yeah, that's right. That's what the Home Office does. We enforce the law. People would have actually been rather impressed if she'd done that. She didn't. She showed a lack of weakness, a weakness, a lack of leadership. And now, you know, in front of the sharpest eyed journalist in the country, and she refuses to rule out Britain staying in the customs union, I think the sands are running against her. The only thing in her favour, as Marilyn says on Facebook, is Rub will survive this because May wants her there. That's the one thing that might keep her there. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC.